Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I am Steve Leibowitz, and coming up in today's newscast. Israeli killed near Khawara in Samaria in drive-by terror shooting. Washington comes out against the Jewish return to northern Samaria settlement of Chomesh. And Yulia, the Mediterranean monk seal, extends her stay at Israeli beaches. with the report of a terrorist shooting attack in Samaria. The gunman apparently fired from a passing car hitting the Israeli driver and fired about a dozen bullets from an automatic weapon hitting the victim at least eight times. The attack took place near the flashpoint Palestinian city of Khawara. Magain David, a dome ambulance, was first to arrive on the scene and gave first aid treatment to the victim, who's in his 30s. A helicopter was dispatched to take the victim to hospital but he later died of his wounds, and the victim has now been identified as 32-year-old father of two, Mayor Tamari. The terrorists managed to escape the scene, and security forces have launched a search for the, for the gunman. And joining us now to discuss the latest terror attack is Lieutenant Colonel Maurice Hirsch, former military prosecutor in Judea and Samaria, can nothing be done in order to protect the Israelis driving near Hawara? So we're talking about really the whole area of, of Hermesh, that northern area of, of, of the Shomron. Um, unfortunately, it's areas where um, in order to get to the Jewish settlements, you have to drive through, um, sometimes through the middle of Arab settlements, and it's something which cannot, unfortunately, uh, um, be avoided. What needs to be done there is that... that there needs to be a permanent presence of the soldiers around those areas, in those areas, um, preventing events like this taking place so that even when they do happen, you immediately have the ability to, to close down a, a, a barrier and to immediately catch the, and apprehend the terrorists. There have been a number of security operations in Samaria lately. Terror cells have been eliminated. But how can, can drive-by shootings possibly be prevented? Well, so obviously it's very difficult to, to identify every single terrorist before he uh, um, goes out to carry out a terrorist attack. But here what we're really talking about is um, the operational basis that the terrorists have. And there is something that much more that we can do in order to improve the situation. We've already seen that uh, um, the al aqsa Martyr Brigades, for example, has taken responsibility for the murder today. Um, the al aqsa Martyr Brigades, we have to understand, is part of Fatah, is part of the organization headed by Mahmoud Abbas, part of the organization that runs the Palestinian Authority. Um, so really, when we're talking about finding the terrorists, we, we, we're, we're having a very difficult time because that whole idea of security coordination with the Palestinian Authority only works when the PA is interested in helping and only works when the PA is interested in getting rid of its opponents in Fatah. The PA will never, Fatah will never give Israel information regarding Fatah's own terrorists who are about to carry out terrorist attacks. Morris, Israel is planning possibly to return to settle evacuated areas of northern Samaria. Will this add to the security strain on, on, on our forces? No, I mean, I really have to distinguish between the two things. I don't think that it, it, <clears throat> it was morally justified in any way, shape, or form for the, 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 the government of the state of Israel to implement a fundamentally racist policy that says that, well, this area of land on the world, on the face of the globe, will be Yudin Fry, um, and, and no Jew will ever be allowed to go in there. Obviously, uh, it's something that has to be taken to, into account. Um, the difference is allowing Jews to go back into there, to re-establishing settlement points. The settlement points are a fundamental part of, already from the, 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 the days of, of 1967, are a fundamental part of Israel's security apparatus in Judea and Samaria. They are the base for uh, um, all types of operations around them. And therefore, in general, the existence of settlements isn't something which is a, is a burden on the security of the region, but it's something which integrally helps and improves the security of the region, even if it requires uh, um, 
the allocation of, of certain forces in order to, 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 to really strengthen that stronghold. Lieutenant Colonel, looking forward, if you would, uh, do you expect this will be a quiet or challenging summer? I think there's uh, um, almost no chance of things calming down in the next uh, uh, in the coming weeks. Um, we've been on a downward spiral for a very long time, if you remember, already a year and a half ago when uh, when Israel first went into uh, into Shem, into Nablus, and and uh, eliminated the three initial members of uh, of, of the Lions Den. Um, Mahmoud Abbas immediately called for retaliation for the Palestinian terrorists to go out and kill at least six Israelis um, to give pay them back in double using his terms. Um, and that feeling of, uh, um, of violence, of terror has just continued on, which is why we've seen this isn't the terror that's happening at the moment isn't happening within a vacuum. It's happening because it's fueled by the Palestinian Authority, which is really uh, uh, in this uh, in this continuing a power struggle, not only with possibly with Israel, but really within Palestinian society itself. Hamas really breathing down the neck of the Palestinian Authority of Fatah, saying we are legitimate uh, um, rulers of the area. We were the ones who were elected. We were the ones who should have been elected had Abbas not cancelled the elections. And therefore, we demand to return to power. And Fatah fighting back with the only way that it knows, um, let's kill Jews. Thanks so much uh, for being with us, Colonel. Thank you. So we know that the news is fast-paced, and we want to let you know that ILTV's new app is now available. So if you want to stay connected to the latest news from Israel, the Middle East, and the Jewish world, download our app now on all your devices. It's available in the App Store for both Android and iPhone. President Isaac Herzog, Irmont embarked this morning on an official two-day visit to Azerbaijan at the invitation of his counterpart. This is a sign of the continuing warming ties between Israel and the Shiite Muslim country, a neighbor of Iran. ILTV's William Sharon has this report. President Yitzhak Herzog arrived in Azerbaijan on Tuesday, along with his wife Michal, for an official two-day state visit as ties between the two countries continue to flourish. Ahead of his departure from Ben Gurion Airport, Herzog said that Azerbaijan is a key and friendly country and said he is certain his visit will open the door to deepening cooperation. אנחנו צריכים לזכור שמעבר ליחסי המסחר ומעבר לקשרים ההיסטוריים, כולל הקהילה היהודית ההיסטורית, אזרבייג'אן היא שכנתה של איראן. איראן גורם בלתי יציב באזור שחותר כל הזמן לפעולות כנגד מדינת ישראל וכנגד הברית המתפתחת של שלום וביטחון באזור, ואני בוודאי אדון על כך. אנחנו ננסה לקדם את יחסינו, יחסים בין המדינות, ככל שרק ניתן. This recent trip comes after Azerbaijan opened an embassy in Israel for the first time earlier this year. While in the Shiad Muslim state, Herzog is also scheduled to meet with members of the Jewish community in Baku. And in more diplomatic news, Israeli Transportation Minister Miri Regev is on an historic official visit to Morocco, the first of an Israeli Transportation Minister. While there, Regev met her counterpart, and the two signed three transportation agreements in Rabat on Monday and agreed on the establishment of a joint work team between the two countries in the various fields of transportation. One of the agreements Regev signed will recognize Israeli driver's license in Morocco. This is Israeli tourism to the kingdom has surged in the wake of the Abraham Accords. The additional agreements will strengthen maritime trade between the two countries, and the third agreement pertains to the developing road safety and innovation issue. Regev tweeted on her visit that she hopes to bring the relations between the two countries to new heights and said she hopes to soon host the Moroccan Minister of Transport in Israel. 